I'm a therapist and I was wrong about trauma recovery. When I first learned the polyvagal theory and began understanding the somatic pieces of trauma work, I got something wrong. I thought recovering from trauma was sort of done all at once. I'll explain to you where I got things wrong and what I ended up learning in this episode. My name is Justin Sinceri. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist helping you to finally get the trauma relief that you deserve and need. And yeah, a big part of that is an accurate knowledge base. Welcome to Stuck Not Broken. This podcast is, of course, not therapy, nor is it intended to be a replacement for therapy. So I am over on justinlmft.com. I have a blog article, blog article entitled, I'm a therapist and I was wrong about trauma recovery. If you want to read the original article, I'll have a link in the description. So I thought, yeah, I thought that getting unstuck was done all at once. I had been learning from uh, uh, Porges' lectures and reading his books and his articles. And then I was also learning from Peter Levine, his books and um, his like YouTube videos he, that he's published. And I saw things that looked pretty darn miraculous. He was working with people. Um, we, uh, you, you may have heard of his story of Nancy, uh, especially if you've read Waking the Tiger, but it comes up a lot. He had this client, uh, Nancy, who was heavily traumatized. And this was the first time he had done this where in a session with her, he recognized that she had some stuck flight energy, stuck trauma. And he gave her this image of a tiger chasing her. And that prompted her to do this shaking, trembling, trauma releasing type of thing. And the idea is that it released the stuck trauma within her. And then there's a video of Ray where they're up on stage and Peter Levine is doing uh, some trauma releasing stuff with him based on his uh, somatic experiencing. And Ray has this uh, twitch that he developed from his stuck trauma. And Peter Levine asks him to open his jaw slowly. And it seems like the trauma just kind of gets released. There's also, I think someone had sent this to me, I forget who it was, uh, but someone sent me like access to some of his course videos and I think that's what it was. And one of them was um, Peter Levine working with this baby, this infant who had some trauma and he simply <laughs> or seemed simply put his, hand, put his hand on the baby's back and the baby had tensed up but then released and I think he like cried it out or something like that but basically the trauma was just released by Peter Levine putting his hand on his back so all these things seem like miracles like just incredible uh, trauma releasing uh, moments um, and yeah they, these are it's very good trauma work as as best I can tell I think Levine does some amazing things and I'm glad that he's sharing a lot of what he does and I, I probably would if I was ever to go back to do some sort of schooling I would probably do uh, get, seek out a somatic experiencing practitioner uh, credential, whatever you call it. So yeah, he's doing some really good work. But as it turns out, uh, Nancy continued to work on her trauma. It wasn't just a one-time thing. Uh, I didn't cite where I got that from, but I think it was one of his books where he says he doesn't really work with clients like that exactly anymore. It wasn't just like a one-time thing and that he took more time to slowly ease into the trauma as best I remember it. So I don't, I don't know if he regretted, I don't think he regretted doing that with her, but it sounds like something he took more time with. And it wasn't just like a one-time thing. And Ray, the soldier on stage that slowly opens his jaw and releases his trauma, that wasn't a one-time thing either. They had done some somatic experiencing preliminary work, preliminary work before uh, getting up on stage. And they had some follow-up meetings as well. So it wasn't, it is his trauma, his stuck state didn't go away all at once either. So I incorrectly thought that my therapy clients were supposed to go through this full body trauma releasing, shaking and trembling. I thought it was like all or nothing. If we could just unstuck, if we can just discharge all this trauma all at once, then that'll cure them, right? But for the most part, I was not seeing that in my clients. And the first time I did see that, that shaking, trembling thing, the client came back the following week. So I did something very similar where... I had given the client an image, and this one for her was uh, running to her grandmother's house, which was a safe place for her. So in this image, she was able to visualize running, which allowed for some 
stuck freeze energy, some flight freeze energy to discharge. And yeah, okay, great. But then she came back the next week and I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is going to be a miracle. And she's going to tell me that her life is just absolutely fundamentally changed and that she's no longer traumatized. She's succeeding in every level and every domain in every facet of life. But she came back the next week and yeah, things were kind of different, but for the most part, they were living in a traumatized state or she was as this client. I remember her telling me like she had, you know, maybe more of a stronger emotional baseline uh, or less of that freeze kind of energy. But yeah, I mean, she was still traumatized. She was still very much stuck in a traumatized state. So no, it wasn't a one-time thing. So why was this? What? Like what is happening here, right? Why weren't they, this, these people and my client, why weren't they able to just access their safety state? Why weren't they just releasing their trauma? Why did these presenting problems that we were working on persist? So I'll be honest, like I was disappointed with myself. I was frustrated. I was confused. I was doubting myself as a therapist on this new somatic kind of track. But the reality is there are lots of reasons. There's plenty of reasons why they didn't have a miraculous change. That might be the present day family context. Maybe they're lacking co-regulation and they're constantly being re-traumatized. Maybe the path of trauma that they went through was not that shock trauma variety, but more of the uh, chronic disruption of connectedness. And maybe they didn't have enough distress tolerance built up. We kind of need more of a distress tolerance, a stronger vagal break before releasing trauma. And by the way, so that releasing trauma thing, that's not all kinds of trauma. That's more of a shock trauma kind of thing. And Peter Levine, I think, is known as someone who specializes in shock trauma. So when someone goes through a thing, or maybe multiple things, but at least a thing where that flight fight energy is frozen into their system, so they access that mixed state of freeze, so that immobilization locks in the flight fight state, that's like a shock trauma. That's more of the Peter Levine variety of releasing that like acute life threat reaction. For the individual that maybe exists in a defensive state, but it's more due to a chronic disruption of connectedness and maybe even a full on, uh, or maybe not a full on, but a very dominant shutdown kind of state, releasing the trauma doesn't exactly apply to that person potentially. For them, it's more of coming out of that dissociative shutdown, out of numbness into aggression, into power, into fight, their fight state. And then, so it's allowing that sympathetic energy to return, not discharging it. It doesn't quite apply the same way. But recovering from either of these paths of trauma, whether it's the acute left threat reaction or the chronic disruption of connectedness, both of these are, are not done all at once. I, I have not found that to be the case and I haven't met that person that that got, you know, unstuck from trauma all at once. Maybe it's you. I don't know. I haven't met that person yet. Releasing a shock trauma is not just about shaking and trembling. And allowing sympathetic energy to return is not just about, like, willing it to do so. So there are many reasons why someone may stay stuck in a defensive state, but the similarity between all these different traumatized uh, people or bodies or nervous systems the similarity is that they will all have an inability or, or difficulty with accessing their safety state. Hey, by the way, I have something called the polyvagal checklist. I want you to be that polyvagal know-it-all. I want you to feel just absolutely full of yourself so much so that you're like you're annoying to other people. I want you to know it all, all right? Just like me. <laughs> so I have this thing called polyvagal checklist. Head to the link in the description. It is the nifty gifty for this episode and just sign up for my email list and you will get my polyvagal checklist. It has a list of everything, all the absolute essentials that you need to know about the polyvagal theory. And so you can use that as you're learning about and diving into this stuff, just check off what you know or use it as a guide on what to learn next. Okay, so polyvagal checklist, follow the link in the description for that. So all traumatized people, the very definition of trauma is that there's an inability or difficulty with accessing or maintaining access to uh, the safety state. So developing the vagal break is necessary for, well, for all of us, but specifically in trauma work, it's extremely important. 
But doing so is not exactly a linear process. Change is not really linear. Developing the vagal break is not exactly like A to B or A to Z. It's, it's a very gradual process. It's not really linear. This means that there's going to be obstacles along the way, and that could be real life external obstacles, like literal safety problems. Or maybe in your home, there's a lack of co-regulation that just kind of feeds into and continually reinforces that stuck defensive state. There also could be internal world obstacles, like maybe you have a chronic illness. That's going to really put some obstacles, some bumps in the road in your process of building the vagal, your vagal break, if that's what you're working on. But I'm, I'm more concerned about the obstacles that emerge from your emotions, your cognitions, your impulses, and your sensations. As you gain more access to your safety state, what ends up happening is that the stuck state begins to emerge or polyvagal ladder climbing or and or polyvagal ladder climbing happens. So as you get more access to your safety state, you're, you, you'll go from shutdown up into your fight sympathetic state. As you get more access to your safety state, that immobilization of freeze will start to thaw and then the flight fight energy may start to emerge. Change is not linear, yes, and there's going to be stuff, as you make progress in developing your safety state, there's going to be stuff that comes up that you may not be able to handle, that your safety state, your vagal break may not have the strength quite yet to be able to tolerate. Basically, what I'm saying that is that the natural process of self-regulation begins to happen. For example, as one becomes more grounded in the present moment through maybe using their senses, their shutdown state will naturally alleviate and then fight energy will enter the system. This can be really uncomfortable for people. And so what ends up happening is that it's experienced not as power, but maybe as anger, maybe as uh, uncomfortable um, anger. And so they go right back down into their shutdown state, being unable to really embrace and feel that level of mobilization. Nope, change is not linear. Um, there are going to be moments that feel like progress and there's going to be moments that feel like setbacks. That is the normal process of change. I know it's frustrating, but that is the normal process of change in general. And when it comes to this polyvagal stuff, developing the safety state will feel, you'll feel steps forward. But yeah, along the way, you'll, you'll probably feel like you're taking some steps back as well. Change requires dedication and it requires practice. Let's bring this back to the whole point of this episode, which is that trauma is not solved or released, discharged, relieved all at once. It's not a linear process. There'll, you'll have moments of stepping forward where you feel like the tr stuck traumatized state is not dominating your day-to-day -day existence. But yeah, you'll have those moments where it's kind of creeping up on you or feels like it's eking out or leaking out or exploding maybe even. We don't want that to happen. Ideally, we want the safety state strong enough to be able to handle that so the explosion doesn't happen. Uh, but there might be moments of that as well. There, it, there could be. So it's not linear. It's not all at once. And it might feel like you're taking steps backwards. Change then requires dedication. It requires practice. You probably already know that. Making change is, is gradual. And that definitely includes developing the strength of your vagal break. It is a gradual process. You need to have I would recommend that you have some sort of a dedicated practice, like maybe there is, uh, I don't know, some mindfulness or meditation or an Instagram guru that you follow. Be careful with them, by the way. I was one of them. I'm not there anymore, but be careful with them. So there might be something that you have in place that you can dedicate yourself to on a regular basis to help you work on your trauma. I think it's great. I have my own course. It's called Building Safety Anchors, and that is specifically designed to teach you how to identify safety and then how to practice and to build the strength of your safety state. You can find that on justinlmft.com slash build safety. Yeah, change requires dedication. It requires practice. With my therapy clients, we're able to access safety pretty much in each session. We, I can get them there or I can work with them to get them there through co-regulation, through somatic techniques. So we're able to get there pretty much each session and then we can stretch the capacity of their vagal break through working on their defensive state and then coming back to safety. And I always give them, you know, some sort of homework to do between that session and the next time that I meet with them. 
And that's part of that dedication. That's part of that practice is coming in to do therapy, you know, whether it's weekly or biweekly or whatever. And then also the stuff in between to continually work on building the strength of your vagal break so that you can work more directly on the trauma uh, when you're ready to, once the vagal break is ready to, to do so. Building the safety pathways is the primary concern, though. I do challenge and I work with my clients to further feel into their defensive state as they're ready for it. But, um, you know, for the most part, at the beginning stages, we don't, we're not really doing that. It, it's a bit much. It's too much or a lot, a lot too much. So I, I work with them on building that safety pathway. You have to do that. And so I know therapy is different. You're, you know, maybe you're in therapy, but you might just be doing your own self-regulation, mindfulness, meditation, unstucking sort of practice. So yeah, therapy is is different. But but the dedicated practice, that's what I want you to get from this is whether you're in therapy regularly or you're doing your own self-regulation practice regularly, the point is dedicated practice. In therapy, there's, you know, uh, weekly sessions with homework. For you in your own self-regulation practice, maybe it's a daily, you know, 15-minute thing. I don't know. Uh, but you you set up a daily or uh, some sort of routine that you can continually rely on and set yourself to, you know, on that path to build your vagal break strength so that you can eventually work more directly on your stuck state. Again, it's not a, it's not an all or one or all or nothing thing. This, this trauma stuff, it's not an all or nothing thing. It's not released all at once as best I can tell. Your trauma work might feel or it's the image I have in my mind is that it's like, you're moving forward and it's like, like I imagine like this army, um, like marching forward. The army to me is the strength of your safety state. It's the progress of the safety state. And so hopefully that army, that front line is bolstered enough and strong enough to be able to hold the line as you move forward and attempt to work more directly on the stuck defensive state and actually experiencing it on a sensation level and an impulse level or an emotional level or, or even cognitive. So, or even delving into the trauma narrative, if that's what you're working on. So hopefully that safety state is strong enough to hold that front line and just slowly move forward into the stuck defensive state, not all at once. And then as you slowly move forward, you might realize, oh, some stuff's coming up. And so the front line just stops. It stops, it makes sure that it is re-fortified with everything it needs, metaphorically. In the real world, as you're developing that vagal break strength and then working on the stuck defensive state, you hold the line. You replant yourself firmly in your safety state as much as you can. So basically you recover from, if you notice some dysregulation coming up, you plant yourself right back on that front line, right back in the safety state. And that, where you go into a bit of the defensive state, notice what you're capable of, and then plant yourself back in your safety state, that process will help you to build the strength of those safety pathways to be able to go down the ladder purposefully and mindfully, and then come right back up, re-anchor yourself in safety. That will help to build those pathways. So the image in my mind, the metaphor is an army just sort of slowly marching forward, as a little bit of dysregulation happens, we stop, plant ourselves squarely back into the safety state, and then once we're ready to, once we're re-anchored and well-regulated, then you keep marching forward into that stuck defensive state. So I want you to be patient with yourself, uh, fellow stuck. Now, that's, that's really kind of how to sum this up. It's not all at once. Um, I was wrong when I was learning this stuff. I don't want you to make that same mistake and expect that you know one-time trauma-releasing home run kind of thing. So I really invite you to be as patient with yourself as you can. Change will happen. And if you're focusing and, like, and, and, and using a, uh, some sort of practice, whether it's building safety anchors, my course, or something else, as long as you're moving forward and doing this intentionally and not pushing yourself too far, I, I believe change is very much possible. As you build your safety state, the defensive stuff should ease up more and more and more, especially if you're not pushing it and delving into it before you're ready to. So have that dedicated practice, whatever it is, have that in place and like do it, you know, re really do it. I would, I would encourage you to focus more on the safety state 
versus the trauma narrative or the stuck defensive state until you're ready for it. And yeah, when you see those little wins, when you notice that your army front line is marching forward, celebrate it. Uh, notice it. Give yourself some uh, a little bit of praise or encouragement. You know, whatever helps you just to kind of notice it. Maybe it's just it's just like feeling it for a moment and closing your eyes and feeling what success feels like just for a moment. That that That's totally fine. Give yourself that, please. And when you have setbacks, notice those too. But learn from them. Rededicate yourself to your practice. Keep anchoring in safety. Hold that front line. And when you're ready to, keep marching forward. If you like this episode, please give it a subscribe or follow, you know, whatever platform that you're on. Otherwise, thank you so much for spending some time with me, fellow stuck nut. I do hope this episode has been a helpful resource for you in your process of learning about and applying the polyvagal theory in your trauma relief. Bye. This podcast is not therapy, not intended to be therapy or be a replacement for therapy. Nothing in this creates or indicates a therapeutic relationship. Please consult with your therapist or seek for one in your area if you are experiencing mental health symptoms. Nothing in this podcast should be construed to be specific life advice. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only. More resources are available in the description of this episode and in the footer of Justin Lumpt. Calm.